two-sided robin. So here we have uh, a two-sided part. Uh, so it's cut both on one side and on the other side to create this full 3D uh, robin bird that you can see here. We've got a flat bottom so it's able to stand up on any surface uh, and not only is this part of our Christmas projects this could also be used as an all-round decoration as it is just a very simplistic contemporary uh, looking bird. So let's take a look at the project files. So let's open the robin files. We've got the robin.crv 3D file there. And then we'll just take a look at what we've got. So let's just tile the windows so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view. So here is our composite model. We've got uh, the robin here and we've got some tabs to hold it in place. You can see in terms of the 2D view, I have these circles here that represent my dowel holes. Uh, and these are going to be used to help me align my values in terms of X and Y when we come to flip the part over when we machine the other side. So if we go into the modeling tab, you can see I've got various levels that make up this composite model. We'll just switch these three off and we'll just see how we built this up to begin with. Okay, you can see I've got three components here that I created uh, to create uh, the overall bird. Okay, so the tail, if we go to our layers tab, I've got a bird layer here. I created the tail using this vector here and this vector here using the two rail sweep where I swept this vector uh, between the two rails to create uh, the tail. Okay, so that's the tail. The main body of the bird, I used this vector here and used the create shape tool uh, just to fill that vector with material at no height. Okay, so that's giving us a nice bulbous shape. And then I've used this vector here to create the beak. And that's all it took really was just three simple components. And then I created a component based on these three using this tool here and that gave me uh, a new component that I named bird and then with all three of those components that make up this bird component I used the sculpting tools to ultimately get this smoothed out version of the bird that you can see here. So a very easy setup, just three components using the sculpting tools just to blend everything together to give us nice uh, smooth transition throughout the component and that's all it took. Okay, we've got a zero plane in here. I'll talk about that shortly. And then we've got uh, some tabs uh, based from our uh, clip art. Okay, so just go in there into my 3D tab section. You can see uh, the various tabs we've got available. Pulled those in to create um, the tabs to hold my robin in place. So with the Robin model, the tabs, components, and these vectors that represent the dowels, I simply took those and then used the option to copy them to the other side. So when I flip to the other side, you can see I have those visible here. And at this stage, we're pretty much ready to go and create the toolpaths for this. So over to the toolpaths tab. So I've got this set up. Um, in terms of toolpaths, how we normally teach uh, two-sided machining. So I'm just going to briefly uh, walk through this, but for more information on two-sided machining, please refer to the two-sided machining tutorials uh, available from the support site or from your tutorial browser. So for the top side, um, we've got these dowels. So if we just double click on that, so that's these circles. We're machining down into our block of material by three quarters of an inch using a quarter inch end mill on the inside of those vectors. And that will create holes for us that we could then um, go ahead and put our dowel pins in place. Uh, then we've got the 3D roughing toolpath. So if we double click on that, 
So the roughen tool path, we're going to use uh, a large tool, uh, an end mill in this case, we're using a quarter inch end mill, and we're going to basically hog out uh, the majority of the top side of our robin, just so it's safe for us to go in with a smaller tool to get all the detail of the robin afterwards. So we're going to specify the um, machining boundary to be uh, the sculpt level. So if you go over to our modeling tab, you can see in my sculpt level I've got the bird. So it's going to take the outline of the bird and use that to machine inside. Um, and anything else that is within that uh, boundary of the bird, for example, these tabs that you can see here, will be machined so that we don't machine those tabs away, along with this zero plane. Now this zero plane is just a plane of material that I've set to have a negative base height of 0.125, okay? And that's just so that the tool can go a little bit past zero uh, just to eliminate the cuspin effects that we may see if we um, machine this without the negated plane. Okay, so once uh, we've got our setup here, that's all okay. We'd then go ahead and calculate it, preview this, preview selected toolpath. We can see all the steps in there. You can see how that part would look. Excellent, into the 3D finish toolpath. So here we're gonna use a much finer tool. In this case, I'm actually using a three mil ball nose here. I'm gonna use the same level, a little bit of an offset, and then we'll just simply calculate that preview it, preview the selected toolpath and you can see we've got a much uh, smoother uh, render there and this is exactly what we'll see on our machine. Perfect, so that's the top side machined, that's the top side complete. So now we'd take this block of material off of our machine bed and then we'd think about uh, creating the bottom side. So let's switch over to the bottom side so before we put our block of material on the machine, what we're actually going to do is profile the dowel holes of the bottom side, so these three dowels, and we're going to machine them straight into our spoil board. Okay, so we're going to machine those directly into our spoil board. So if we preview this pass, you can see that it's coming down past our block of material that wouldn't be on the machine bed at this stage. And we we'll just drill straight into the spoil board. Once that's done, we then take our block of material with the dowel hole with the dowels that are inserted into the dowel holes of the top side, and we're going to locate them to the dowel holes that we've just drilled into the spoil board uh, of the bottom side and then that is our X and Y locations located accurately and then we we'll just secure our block of material in place and then we can continue to run the other two tool paths so 3D roughing and these two passes are exactly the same um, set up as what we use on the top side so let's just go ahead and preview all sides here uh, to see how the part would look and we can see there that we're definitely cutting all the way through we're not going to be left with any nasty cusping around the seam of the model and that's how our part should look perfect so let's go ahead and machine this Okay, so here is our finished two-sided bird. 
So I've took her off the machine, I've removed the three tabs that we had on uh, the model and then I've just given it a good sand over just to remove the tab marks and just to give it a nice finish on both sides. Now one thing to point out here is the actual um, tail of the bird as it gets towards the end it is very very thin I'm not sure how well you can see that uh, here but it is very thin so if you wanted to you could go into the file and look at bulking it up a little bit more to the actual model itself um, or if like me you quite like this look we're going to leave it as it is uh, and this just adds to the real nice delicacy of the actual bird itself so in my initial design concept I wanted to paint the breast portion of this robin a red colour now in hindsight uh, now that I'm actually looking at the physical thing um, I really don't want to do that I think this just works on its own as a nice simplistic contemporary piece and I think uh, just to finish this up we could just do with a little bit of uh, oil just to gloss over it and just to make it uh, nice and shiny um, and so that's all I'm going to do. So we're going to use some uh, tea coil and all I'm going to do is brush it over both sides. Okay, so here is our finished robin. So we've put some simple teak oil on there, a few coats, and I'm happy with what we've got there. Uh, so all I need to do now is just put it on my mantelpiece. So if you want to cut your own version of the robin, then please head over to the Vectric website where you can download the free files for this. If you do end up cutting your own version, please share it with us using the hashtag Vetric Free Christmas. We always want to see uh, your versions of the free projects that we make. Happy making!